Hey everyone, this is Chris from Console Customs and I'm coming to you today to show you the installation of our new Xbox One Max Fire One version 2.5. <clears throat> this is an update from the older version which looks like this. Basically it's the same thing except made out of flex material and uh, we built on an extra connection for the LED so it's one less wire that you have to run. We are going to do this installation today on two different controllers. Uh, an older controller without the uh, 3.5 millimeter headset port and uh, one of the newer ones that has it. This mod does not work in the Elite controllers. Uh, we are working on a newer version that will work in all three. So with your mod, uh, depending on what you ordered, you are going to get some wire with it. Screwdrivers, uh, you've got a Torx T8, the security kind with a hole in the tip, and uh, a Torx T6. And uh, you also may order buttons, depends on what you get, but we have two different sizes, so a small 6mm square and a larger 12mm square. Some things that uh, you will need, you'll need a soldering iron, uh, obviously some solder, hot glue gun, drill bits for the particular size button that you ordered. Uh, if you ordered the smaller button, you will want a 1 8 or 9 64 inch drill bit. <clears throat> That's uh, going to be like a 3.5 millimeter drill bit for uh, everybody in the rest of the world. Uh, for the larger button, you would want a 17 64 inch drill bit or a 9 32nd inch drill bit uh, and that's 6.5 millimeter to 7 millimeter somewhere in that range uh, in metric so let's uh, go ahead and get started with this controller to take apart the controller uh, we've got to remove some covers we'll remove the battery cover there's one screw underneath this sticker in the middle here and uh, we have to remove these side covers. You can use some little tools to uh, <clears throat> pop the clips open, but uh, you've got some good tools built into your hand, uh, your fingernails there. It just pops off pretty easily. So pop those off, and we have four more screws underneath there. So we will go ahead with our T8 screwdriver pull those out okay with all those unscrewed we can remove the back cover set that off to the side for a moment <clears throat> uh, you can also take off the front and we'll go ahead and pull the thumbsticks off because we have to remove this board. So, as you can see, we've got several wires soldered to this board. Uh, we have the ones for the big rumble motors in the grips, and the gray and black are for the rumble motors in the triggers. We have to remove this board. So, the best way uh, to get this out and work on it is just to desolder these. Um, if uh, you really want to leave them you can just desolder this one right here and that will give you enough room to take the board out and flip it around leaving it in the controller. I'll show you that real quick. Uh, we have to remove two T6 screws basically on either corner of this board. So once we have those out, this board is actually just now held in by two plugs, plugs that we'll actually be soldering to. So you can kind of either push on the thumbsticks or just 
lift up on the board from here. Now, with all these rumble motors soldered, we can't really pull this out and flip it around. There's just not enough length. If we remove just this one, you can get it out and flip it around to work on it. Um, but just for ease of the video, I'm going to remove all of them. That way we can just set this off to the side, our rumble motors off to the side. Because what we're working on is this part of the board right here. So all of our solder connections now connect directly to this board. As you can see, this just lays right in here. And you can see all the solder connections just line up with the uh, legs on those plugs. So with this older controller, uh, we can also do a few things uh, to not have to run so many wires. If you look, we have some connections for the B button and the right trigger. And as you see, they kind of line right up with some of those vias. So we can scrape off that green coating and solder those directly to the board. Now on the newer controllers with the 3.5 millimeter port, we actually have to run wires. So we run wires from this small pad right here uh, to some connections on the other side of the board. You can do that with this one as well. Uh, some people don't like scraping at those vias. You can actually, if you if you scrape too much and scrape the copper off, then uh, you can actually make the button stop working. So some people like to go with the alternative route. So I will show you both ways on this one. We'll scrape the vias and I'll show you where the connection points are for the wires as well. Since we are going to use the vias, uh, the first thing we want to do before putting this in is is to scrape off that green coating. So you can set the board in there and see which ones line up with the board so you know which ones to scrape. Basically what you want to do is just take a small pocket knife and scrape across the via. Don't put the tip of it in a hole and twist. You'll actually cut through the copper so you don't want to do that. You want to just lightly scrape across it a few times. And I'll show you here in just a second. So we want something like that. Now those are the right trigger and B connections. There's actually three other ones. We have the left trigger, L3, and uh, our trigger signal connection. The trigger signal one is, is a little tough because it's kind of in the corner of the thumbstick here. So that one might even be one you want to run a wire for. Um, you can see where it is right there. But uh, I will go ahead and scrape that one. And we'll line it up and look at our connections over on the far side here for the left trigger and L3. And you just want to see some nice shiny copper there. If you scrape too much, you'll end up just kind of seeing a whitish grayish board behind there and that would be a bad thing so got those all done now before we put the board in what we want to do is basically tin these connections so we're going to add just a little bit of solder to them that way we know that we scraped everything off well enough and uh, that our solder is going to stick so we're not halfway through the installation and find out uh, we didn't scrape it well enough.
All right, so what you want to see is basically now there's a nice little ball of solder on those connections. Uh, the B button doesn't really have a ball there, but I can still see this, the solder is sticking to the copper, so we're good. Now we can set the mod in place, and usually what I will do is start with one of these connections just to hold it down in place. Uh, with the flex it does move around a little more than the older ones, but being that it's thinner, it really helps the overall installation when we're going to solder to the plugs. So I'll just hit all these connections to the via real, vias real quick. Once you get uh, one or two of those down, the other ones go a lot easier because the board stops moving. may need to hold it down for some of them like that uh, SG connection there. Okay, so now those are all soldered to the board and we can work on actually we'll, we'll go next to the R3 connection this one you actually are soldering it's a little hard to see in here but uh, you're soldering to the edge of a resistor so the the board lays right next to a resistor in here can see that there so we're just going to solder right to the edge of that resistor so just like that all right so all the rest of the connections now will go to legs of the plug so basically everywhere you see small copper pad next to a plug leg that's where you have to solder this is where the flex will make this installation a lot easier it sits lower so you can get better contact with your soldering iron tip on the leg and also the pad so I kinda have a method of doing this starting from the furthest one to the left and going towards the right and then I just place my soldering iron tip on the right side of the leg so that it's uh, touching the leg and the pad at the same time so that way I can keep moving to the right just basically like that I just keep moving to the next one to the right and that way I don't end up bridging my solder connections and if I do bridge the solder connections I didn't show it earlier but we actually include the soldering braid with all the kits and that uh, will help you to remove any solder that you may have uh, bridged across connection. I'll, I'll kind of show how you use that in a little bit but uh, there's the first three on the top of this plug And we'll just go through all these other ones. It also really helps with your soldering iron to have a wet sponge nearby. That way you can keep the tip of your iron clean. Uh, these are real small connections so you don't want it big old globs of solder on there. And a nice clean tip always helps everything flow much better. Alright, so as I said, on the older version, um, there was only three connections on this <clears throat> bottom side over here, but now there's four because one of those is for the LED, so it 
we don't have to run a wire for the LED like we did on the old version. This one's a little trickier being close to the thumb stick here. So get these all finished. Okay, so we have all the connections finished now. Uh, but let's just uh, let's go ahead and make a mistake. Let's say we use too much solder and ended up with the connections bridged, like the uh, the X and V. That's the view button connection right here. So those are bridged together. Um, so with your kit, you'll also get some desoldering braid basically looks like this and to use this it won't come into focus um, to use this we basically just place it on top of what the solder we want to remove place our soldering iron on top of it heat it up a little bit and the solder will basically wick into the braid And now those connections are clean, and we can attempt to solder them again. And that is something that we include with every kit. But you can usually find it at your local store, like a Radio Shack if you're in the U.S. Uh, sorry, I don't know places in Europe where you could find that, but now we're all back to normal. So from this point, actually right here, we could be done with our installation if we did not want to add any buttons. Um, but as you can see up here, we have the option for four different buttons. Uh, this one, the first one is labeled RF. That's actually the uh, connection for the mod button. Um, if you do not hook that up, you would use left on the D-pad to turn on most features. So you could double tap left to turn on rapid fire, uh, left plus B will turn on drop shot, left plus A will turn on jump shot, and so on. If you hook a button up to here, it can do the same thing as left on the D-pad. So you have a button on the back of the controller for turning rapid fire on and off, turning drop shot on and off, uh, things of that nature. The And those can work together. So you, if you install the button, you can have left and the button, uh, but there's options to turn off left or turn off the button, depending on how you have it set up. Uh, the Alt... Uh, that's like the alternate connection, so a lot of features, uh, a lot of buttons have alternate uh, features that can be turned on. From the D-pad, that's actually up on the D-pad. So if you hook up this alt, that's the same thing as the up direction on the D-pad. Um, so like up and L3 will turn on auto run. So if you install that button, you could push that button in L3, L3 and it would turn on auto run. The last two that are labeled M1 and M2, those are your remapping buttons. Those are reflex remapping buttons, so you can add two buttons to the back of the controller, and those can map any controller button, uh, basically any button we've hooked up here. So any D-pad direction, A, B, X, Y, the triggers, the bumpers, uh, thumbsticks, clicks, and you can assign any of those buttons to those buttons on the back of the controller. So you can have a jump button, a crouch button, a reload button on the back of the controller. You never have to take your thumb off the thumbstick to do those things. Uh, but if you don't want to hook anything up, then right now you would be done. And you can install this back in your controller, close it up, and you'd be good to go. Uh, but as I said, if you did not want to use the vias, we have these alternate connections. So we have a small pad here for the right trigger for B. The trigger signal SG is right here. Left trigger and L3. That's a left thumbstick click. So we would need to run wires from each of those pads to some locations on the other side of the board. Um, except for B actually. B is right here. Let me on this controller you can actually run a wire for B from here to this top connection right here 
Uh, as you can see, there's a trace that comes down from up here, straight down to this little plug, so you can just run a short wire from here to here. Uh, for the right trigger, we would need to run it to the other side of the board. And getting close here, we have this small black uh, resistor and capacitor right here. It's an RC filter. The bottoms of these are connected together on the circuit board already, so you would actually have to solder just to the bottom edge of one or both of these. Now these are very small uh, components, so if you leave your soldering iron on them too long, it will come off the board quite easily, so you need to be careful there. Um, it'll be the same thing for the left trigger. So you would need to solder that wire to the bottom edge of these. Okay, for our SG, this one's a little easier. We take that to the other side of the board and we solder to the bottom leg right here. Uh, this is a magnetic sensor for the triggers, um, but we would solder, solder to that bottom leg right there. Uh, the left trigger, similar situation um, with these, you need to solder to the bottom edge of either this resistor or capacitor right here. And the last one, L3, uh, again an easy one, uh, you can go either to uh, this solder point right here or this one up here. Either either one of these two will get the job done. Alright so this one we are just going to leave it as it is. Um, in our other controller with the 3.5 millimeter port we'll install one button just to show you that and uh, go from there. Uh, basically you just need to reinstall the board just snaps into place, don't forget your screws and re-solder all your wires and rumble motors. I won't do that right now, save some time. So we'll just set that aside. And come over to our controller with the 3.5 millimeter port. Uh, same thing, I've already taken the screws out of this one. So front comes off and remove our thumb sticks back is a little bit harder to come off just because of the port there. Uh, you just have to pull forward on it a little bit to get it over the port. Uh, we can take it this way. And just pop it off the, the port there. Set that aside. So you can tell already this looks different inside. Um, not uh, as many connections. The, the main processor is a lot smaller. It doesn't have visible legs on it. And uh, it looks different on the other side as well. So the same thing. We need to remove our solder connections and our two T6 screws here. We'll start with our connections. And you can do the same thing on this one. You can remove only the uh, the connection for uh, this rumble motor over here, and you'll be able to remove the board and flip it over. Okay, so now we just need to get our screws out of here. And with our screws out, we can do the same thing, just pop the board out. And one thing you have to be careful of with this one is that port, 3.5 millimeter port, is actually just loose in there. So we have to make sure we get it back in the right place uh, when we put this back together. So we'll set that aside for the moment. And we can take a look at our board. So as you can see, there's uh, the plugs are actually a different color, and we grab another one of our mods. 
you can see that uh, there are no vias that line up with those holes so we actually have to run the wires on this one so basically from this point now what we can do is just uh, start soldering our connections to the plugs same way that we did on the last one uh, first one again probably be a little tricky well because the board can kind of move around a little bit but uh, just set it down and hold it in place a little bit and once we get at least one of those it'll stay in place so I'm just going to do another one on the other side here just to get our board tacked down in place so we don't want to forget about our R3 connection right here uh, just like on the older controllers we're soldering to a small little resistor there and there's that connection and now we can just move on to the rest of our legs of the plugs again I like to move right to the left so I can keep my soldering iron just on one side of the leg and hopefully not bridge any connections keeping that tip clean on my sponge okay so now we have all those connections complete we'll look them over actually it looks like my LB connection there and maybe even my ground is not fully connected so we are going to hit those again real quick So now those look good. And possibly some of these I need to touch up. A little more difficult with the camera in the way. Alright, so let's, uh, since we did it with the other one, you may only be watching this installation. In a case like this where uh, we bridge those connections together, we want to use our desoldering braid. Uh, this is included with the kit to remove that solder so we can fix that. So basically we take our, our desoldering braid, place it over top of the solder we want to remove, heat it up, that solder wicks into the braid and the connection is free again so we can redo those connections now we have them reconnected not bridged together okay so now uh, we on this controller uh, we need to run wires for our B button right trigger, left trigger, 
L3 and uh, our trigger signal connection is SG. So I've already pre-cut some different uh, lengths of wire here that I will use for this. Um, the first one will be the B button. And that is on this side of the board still. So for this one, we need to solder our wire here where I just put the solder and we have to go up to our B button up here. So the easiest way to do this is to scrape off just half of this black circle. But you need to be careful because you don't want to scrape the whole thing. There's only copper underneath this circle, not the rest of this black area here uh, for the button connection. If you scrape off the whole thing, your B button will stop working and it can be very difficult to fix it. So just take a small pocket knife. I uh, suggest going across it this direction. Start at the bottom and work your way up. Just till you see some copper that you can solder to. Like that. So we will take put some solder right there. And now you can just take a small piece of wire Go from the mod up to that connection. Just like that. Wire's a little longer than what's needed, but uh, it's kind of hard to work with a real short piece of wire, so we'll leave it long like that. Uh, the next one, we will go to the right trigger. Need a little bit longer piece of wire for that one. Hopefully this one I made long enough. So we will solder it here to the board. And flip this over. Now where we need to solder this, get in real close. Uh, let me grab my tweezers here. All right, so our resistor capacitor combo is right here, but uh, instead of having to solder to that, they give us this nice little pad right next to it. So we're gonna solder to that guy right there, right underneath that T of that TP104. So uh, it helps if you just add a little bit of extra solder to that first. And then we can solder our wire in place there. And just make sure that your wire is not too long hitting any of these other connections here. Um, not sure exactly what those are for, but it probably will make some funky stuff happen with your controller. So it's best to stay away from them. But, uh, we'll just bend that down out of the way for now. And we can move on to our next one. So we'll just keep going across the board to our SG connection. Let's grab another section of wire here. We will take that over to the other side. And just like on the other controller, it's the same place. It's the bottom leg uh, of this magnetic sensor here. There's a little white dot next to it on this board. So just like that. Okay and next we have our left trigger. So we'll solder our wire for that. Come over to the other side of the board. And 
this piece of wire is kind of way too long. I'm going to make it a little shorter, but if we come in close here again, all right, we are looking at right here this resistor capacitor combo, and we are soldering to this small pad right underneath it. So basically, in between the TP105 and the R42. That is where we are going. Just to make things neat, I'm going to short, shorten this wire up. And uh, I have just a small, this is 30 gauge wire, uh, wire strippers came from Radio Shack uh, with a wire wrapping tool. So again, we want to just tin that little pad with some solder, just to make it easier to solder to. And there you have it. So again, just make sure that the wire is not sticking out, touching any other pads next to it. Uh, that would be bad. Okay. Our last one is the L3 or left thumbstick click. And uh, we'll just grab this white wire here. Come to the other side and again for this we can go either to this big solder connection here or this one up here. Either one of those two works fine. So again just add some solder to make that easier. Make that connection, and now we are done, unless we want to add a button, uh, which in this case, on this controller, we're going to go ahead and add uh, a button just for turning our mods on and off, so we're going to add the, uh, the button to these pads labeled RF. So, again, in case you didn't watch the uh, previous controller, got connections here RF, the ALT, ALT, M1 and M2. The RF gives us the same function as left on the D-pad. Uh, so you, instead of having to tap, double tap left or left plus B to turn on drop shot, uh, you can push a button on the back of the controller. So that, that's good if you don't want to uh, worry about accidentally turning something on and off with the D-pad. You can disable the function of the D-pad and just use the button. The ALT uh, takes the place of the UP button on the D-pad. Uh, that's for some of the alternate functions. Uh, example, UP plus uh, L3 will turn on Auto Run um, and some other features. So uh, if you want to add that button, that will take the place of UP on the D-pad. And the M1 and M2 are for the reflex remapping buttons. Those are buttons that you can add which can uh, function as any normal controller button. So you can have an A, B, X, Y, pad direction, triggers as buttons on the back of the controller. Um, so there's many popular controllers, companies out there that sell features like that uh, and charge you a lot of money for it. It comes built into this mod and it's programmable so you can assign it to A and then tomorrow you could assign it to Y. Um, it's a really nice feature. So we for now we'll just go ahead and add the, uh, the uh, mod button. So we will normally take that, place it a little bit out of the way um, here on the controller so it's, it's not where you'd normally be grabbing, it's over there easy to just move your finger to 
Uh, but you can really place it anywhere you want. The, the Xbox One controllers are nice. There's a lot of room in here for adding buttons. So if you're adding a big button, you know, you can add that on the side here. Um, there's a lot of room. Um, but uh, for the moment, we're just going to add one of the small buttons because it's just for turning the, uh, the rapid fire and other features on and off. If we were adding a reflex button, we might add the bigger ones, give you a nice... Uh, surface area to push because you're going to be pushing that button a lot. So, again, you can do this really anywhere. So the small button. This is a 964th inch drill bit. Um, just going to put it basically right here. Make our hole. And uh, we use, uh, that, that'll create like kind of a rough edge on your hole. So we use a countersink, use it by hand to just kind of spin it around the hole a couple times. It takes off those rough edges, makes it look nice. You might want to do that on the inside and outside. And then with our button, uh, even on the small ones or the big ones, they all have four legs. We only need two. So if you look at it, you've got two legs on one side, two legs on the other. Just take one of those, bend them and break them off. So we can place that in our hole. I'm just going to use this T6 screwdriver just to hold it in place for a second while Put some hot glue around it. We'll let that sit for a second and uh, come back when it's dry. Okay, so we are back. I've added some glue all the way around this button to help hold it in place and that's all dry now. Uh, one thing we don't want to do is leave these legs sticking straight up so They'll hit the back or the, the circuit board, so we don't want to do that. We'll just push them down, lay them out flat, and uh, now we need to make the connections for our wires. So get two longer pieces of wire because we want to attach them to the circuit board before we put the circuit board back in the controller since it uh, we can't access this once it's in. So, we're just soldering two wires here. Does not really matter. I'm leaving both the same color just because it doesn't matter um, which of these solder pads goes which part of the button. Um, all it's doing is closing a circuit. So, uh, it doesn't really matter which one goes where. Uh, now we're all set with this. We can put it back in our controller. Again, we want to make sure that uh, the 3.5 millimeter jack there is in place. We want to just set the board back in place and then push it down so the plugs connect. Make sure our rumble motor wires are out of the way. And uh, we will go ahead and put our T6 screws back in. Okay, with those screws back in, we can Resolder the wires for our rumble motors real quick as well. Um, I like to take and add just a little solder to those pads. Usually makes making those connections uh, a little easier.
Okay, so now we have all our rumble motor wires connected again. The board is screwed in place. All we have left to do is connect the wires for our button. So we will get some solder on each of these legs. And just get uh, our wires over here and make those connections. So, with those in place, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of hot glue over top of those wires just to make sure they don't go anywhere. Alright, so while it's drying we can take our thumbsticks, put those back on. You can put the front of your shell on. And go ahead and put the back half of your shell on. Just make sure that uh, your battery, little prongs for the battery are sticking out. They don't get closed inside the shell. It's a common thing that happens there. And if anything feels like it's not wanting to close up well, you might have a wire somewhere where it shouldn't be. Um, usually got a clip down around that 3.5 millimeter port put uh, your screws back in and you're all done now these kits are available on our website on eBay uh, also shortly on Amazon so you can find them lots of places we also sell them in bulk um, so if you're a modder looking to start putting these in controllers uh, we can help you out with some discounted pricing uh, just give us a shout at our website, www.consolecustoms.com. Thank you.